Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Also, Mark Levine, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and the Democratic nominee for the 45th District in the Virginia House of Delegates. It's been a hard week for Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. He's been dumped by Univision, NBC, Miss USA, Macy's, and others for his racially charged remarks about immigration. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. But instead of backing down, Trump doubled down. No, there's no apology because what I said is right. I mean, what I said is 100% right. There is tremendous distress on the border. You know that better than anybody. Despite all of this, Trump is polling higher than before, but many are calling it a black eye for the Republican Party. Jack, should the GOP distance itself from Trump? Oh, I, there will be infighting, Mars. Trump, it, it's a brilliant move. He's got to move to the right. I think it's a brilliant move. Substantively, he knows it's inflammatory. There's a much better way to say that. You can say we should be doing what we did in the early 20th century where we wanted higher quality people. We should insist that these nations south of the border send persons educated and with money. You don't have to use the word rapist. On but the other hand... But are Republicans embarrassed by having this guy in their party? Well, I, I don't know that it's a question of embarrassment. Remember, all of these people have to move to the right. Trump has to, Trump has to win in South Carolina. He's got to win in New Hampshire. He's got to win with the Iowa evangelicals. And Morris, you know, the television stuff, Trump has lost nothing. NBC, he's out of television for the next year anyway. This business of NBC and Univision, it's a big joke. He can't be in TV for 12 months anyway. He's running for president. I think it's a win-win. It's politically savvy. Substantively, the language, of course, is inartful and extreme. But politically, it's a big win. All right, so you, you say he moved to the right. Some think he just went off the cliff to the right. But whatever. Mark, are Democrats happy that Trump is giving Hillary a break? from the spotlight? You know, what Trump said is absolutely offensive. I always thought he was a joke, and now he's worse than a joke. He's yeah, but now the spotlight's joke. off Hillary. Are you happy about that? You know, to me, the most interesting thing is that the Republicans support this, that he's second in the polls. That tells me something about the Republican Party, and in that respect, it does help the Democrats. Well, Mark, uh, I what mean, do you disagree with? Okay. They, how could they support this absolute All right, so use of the nonsense. word, I, I concur and stipulate, use of the word rapist is ridiculous and, 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 and However, and they all bring drugs? I mean, come on, the Mexican well, Americans but, are some of the but hardest a lot working of them, people in the United the States. The basic thrust of this, the basic thrust of this, and you should agree with this, if you contrast what's going on in immigration now with what went on 100 years ago, 100 years ago, the U.S. was in Consistent on quality and immigration. We're not doing that now. We are taking every Tom, Dick, and Harry. And, and there is a big point to that in immigration policy. Jack, you're Don't trying you to agree? whitewash what, what Trump said. You're trying to make it this, a completely different thing. What he said was Mexico is sending us their drug dealers and their rapists. And maybe he assumes some of them are good people. He also attacked people in South America, Central America. He did a but vicious racist sending. attack on virtually every Latino in America. I don't see America. it as racist. I see it as use of uh, unduly inflammatory language. But the basic point, Mark, here's what I want to press. You must agree with this. Mexico is not sending their best. That's Mexico a good isn't point. sending them. Mexico is a corrupt and often dangerous country. But the Mexican people that come here are just trying to live the American dream like anyone else and escape. But that that's another issue. Country. Of course, they want to move up. Of course, that's true. But the point is, shouldn't we insist on quality in immigration in terms of people coming into I'm this country? I'm telling you, they're quality. The people that come oh, here come work on, Mark, very nah, hard. You're, you you're can't find harder isn't working isn't immigrants than Mexican have Americans. Kanye and the Kardashians. The Politicos got got Donald Trump. It's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Meanwhile, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie says he's all in for 2016 and he doesn't plan to sugarcoat anything. I am not running for President of the United States as a surrogate for being elected prom king of America. I am not looking to be the most popular guy who looks in your eyes every day and tries to figure out what you want to hear, say it, and then turn around and do something else. When I stand up on a stage like this in front of all of you, there is one thing you will know for sure. I mean what I say, and I say what I mean, and that's what America needs right now. Let Christie and Don Trump deal with Vladimir Putin. That's all I got to say. Now, Christie's announcement makes 14 Republican candidates, and two more governors are waiting in the wings. If the number reaches 16, it would be the largest pool in 100 years. Jack, what's going on with your party? Is well, it possible to have a front runner at this point? No. Remember what I said, Morris. I predicted about, about six months ago, I said if the number reaches 20, if the number reaches 20, it could reach 40. The dynamics of this race on the Republican side may well be in their infancy. We don't know who else 
else could announce. We don't know what else is going to happen. Christie has the same challenge that a Marco Rubio has, that a Jeb Bush has, and that a Donald Trump has. They've all got to move to the right to survive those early primaries. Christie's undefined. We know very little about his social views. We're going to learn more. I, I love that kind of speech. I think that appeals to many Republicans. It'll play particularly well in a place like New Hampshire, but he remains very undefined. Jeb Bush took a major step by releasing 33 years of financial records. Bush says he paid more to the IRS than Hillary Clinton despite earning less. Mark, could Jeb's transparency damage Hillary's I'm just like you tactic? Not really. If you look at one of the reasons why Clinton paid a sm slightly smaller tax percentage is because she gave, and Bill, gave $10 million to charity, and uh, Bush gave less than a million dollars to charity, so that means he has a, a, a higher tax rate, because when you give a lot to charity, you have a lower tax rate. That's really the only difference here. I do want to say real quick about uh, Jack saying that the Re Republicans are moving to the right. Chris Christie's operative word was mean. There's a reason he used it. It's just interesting to me that when Jack says moving to right, I say it's mean and racist. Which one do you you want either way it's moving to the right well I don't see it I don't know what's right I think Chris Christie I think he's enormously progressive no, Trump is racist. He's I don't mean. know I, I, Trump I Chris think Christie's he, mean Trump I think used used bad Trump I just think used bad language one of the things I kind of agree with Mark on the on the Clinton sure they gave more money that's a good tax analysis I think he's right on the money but the, the issue is not taxes Morris the Clintons are going to be dogged with this foundation and the money you see the big Washington Post story a few days ago it's a good foundation Chelsea it does Clinton, charitable things even Chelsea Clinton is receiving sixty five thousand dollars for a speech, the Clintons are going to have to account for a lot of these kinds of things. How you much never did Jeb Bush get for a speech? I don't know. Well, I, think the, I, think you're right. I think the foundation may turn out to be like an iceberg. There's a lot underwater that yes. we haven't seen yet. Now, back to the Democratic side. Former Virginia Senator Jim Webb has announced he's running, bringing the official tally up to five. Mark, is this a sign that some Democrats are losing faith in Hillary? No. Jim Webb has no chance. And I say this as a Virginian who voted for Jim Webb. Frankly, once he said what he said about the Confederate flag, I think he put the nail in his own political coffin. Now, Jim Webb is no threat to, to Hillary Clinton. What do you think, Jim? No, I agree with that. I, I, it, it looks like I don't see anyone who could come up with the money, who could come up with the stamina, who could come up with the organization, even begin a challenge for Hillary. I think O'Malley is uh, O'Malley's not a joke. I do think Bernie Sanders and Jim Webb are both jokes. I see her as having no opposition. If I were Hillary Clinton, I would duck. I would duck and let Republicans duke it out for the next six months because Hillary Clinton at this point cannot receive receive positive coverage. And I'm sure Mark would agree with this. Any coverage of her right now is going to be negative. And most of the coverage is negative. She's not getting any positive press. It's either the Benghazi investigation on the Hill, oh, the emails, nothing. the foundation. She's trapped in a cycle of no positive press. So the only thing she can do and should do is duck. The I only person so. who could have beaten Hillary Clinton was Elizabeth Warren. She's right. the only one. Chatter is also increasing that Vice President Joe Biden might step into the race. Mark, should your party go with Joe? Polls suggest he might unseat Hillary. I'm a big fan of Joe Biden. I'm a longtime fan of Joe Biden. I don't think he's going to run, and I don't think he can unseat Hillary. I, I disagree, Morrison. I predict that. I don't know when. I predict You mentioned uh, a month or so ago. That, right that here we on would, this air. I predict right. jumping Joe would plunge into this. One thing you remember, I disagree with Mark here. One thing you remember about Joe Biden, and I'm getting old enough, I remember this stuff. He is a very ambitious man. He started thinking about running for the presidency shortly after being elected to the Senate. In 1988, he ran for the presidency. He might have been a good candidate, except for the plagiarism thing. He's now over all that, I think Biden could be a very strong candidate. He oh, appeals, I think he could be a strong he candidate. He appeals to Don't both the left and the center in the Democratic Party. I, I do think Joe Biden would be a strong candidate, and if he were to enter the race, then we'd have a real race there. All right, let's see what happens. Switching gears now to Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal. During his presidential announcement, he said he was done with describing Americans by their ethnicity, adding that, quote, we are not Indian Americans, African Americans, Irish Americans, rich Americans, or poor Americans. We are all Americans. The comment hit a nerve and many Indian Americans called him out for not embracing his heritage. The Republican Party has had a hard time reaching out to minorities, Jack. Was this a bad move? Oh, I, I think Jin, Jindal himself is evidence of the diversity of the party. I don't think it's a bad move. I think it's a great move. I think that's exactly the message we should send. It reminds me every time somebody says, what do Hispanic families want? My God, they want the same thing everybody else wants. It's not about skin color, skin pigmentation. It's about they want wealth. They want prosperity. They want their boy to go to Harvard. They want everything that everybody else wants. And I think that's the message. That's the message that the Republican Party has got to put forth. We're not interested in color. We want the American dream for everybody. Tea Party Senator Ted Cruz also became the subject of internet trolls this week. The presidential candidate did a video for BuzzFeed where he pretended to audition for a role on The Simpsons.
Hi, I'm Ted. With Harry Shearer retiring, I'm auditioning for any part I can get in The Simpsons. Smithers, release the hounds. Excellent. Heidly ho, neighbor. Oakley dokley, neighborino. BuzzFeed is known for its liberal views. In fact, an ad that played before Cruz's video promoted marriage equality. Mark, what's your take on Cruz's audition? Would you hire him? I think Cruz is making himself to be a bigger joke than Donald Trump. I mean, you know, when, when a politician tries to be funny, they better succeed, because if they don't, they just look ridiculous, and he looked ridiculous. I, I kind of agree, Morris. It reminds me, years ago when I did Bill Maher's old show, the executive producer, I had brought jokes out there, and he said to me when I got out there and tried to read the jokes, he said, took me aside and he said, Jack, you are not funny. You never will be funny. You never have been funny. Please stick to politics and not comedy. I think that's what, uh, that's what Mr. Cruz ought to do. I think it, it shows that at least he's willing to give it a try. It may have fallen flat, but at least he's a good sport give, for giving it a try. Wouldn't you say, Mark? Go on Saturday Night Live. They'll give you better lines. Okay. Good point. We'll end with that. Mark Levine, Democratic strategist. Jack Berkman, Republican strategist. The best political panel on TV. Thanks to you Thank both. Thank you, Morris. Thank Happy 4th. Thank you, Mark. Happy 4th, everybody.